Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. Today we'd like to tell you about exterior powers. So those guys here, V, Wretch, W, and it's probably bad notation to use a V in the Wretch. Um, so maybe let's go back and try again, A, Wretch, B. So those little guys here. And well, they come up in geometry and we'll tell you a little bit about them in a second. And they also come up in algebraic geometry via the Plücker coordinates, which gives us a way to map our little friend the Grassmannian KMN into some projective space uh, as a closed subset of some projective space. I will tell you what the power is uh, later. And this realizes the Grassmannian as a projective variety, which is not quite trivial at all, right? So um, to rem remind you that the Grassmannian, uh, let's say of um, those k planes in n space here. So here's k, uh, this guy here's n. So we're looking at k planes in n space. So this little block, that's what was the kind of the point of the previous video, the little block down here determines the Grassmannian. And the good question is why is this linear algebra construction in any way related to what we have done so far? Because so far we were looking at vanishing sets of polynomial equations. So what are actually the polynomial equations here in place? Right? So what are the vanishing sets of those polynomials? So what are the polynomials here in place such that uh, those guys here are exactly the, the zeros of those polynomials? So I told you that the Grassmannian is the first non-trivial example and here comes the reason why it's non-trivial. Uh, well, first reason why it's non-trivial. It's not even quite clear whether it should be a variety. It is, and to see that it's kind of beautiful and gives you an idea um, why so many constructions that you see in linear algebra are actually realizable, realizable as a variety, right? So the task for today is show that this beast here is a variety, right? So find some polynomials. And the historically motivating example is a point with a momentum, which uh, we'll see later is kind of the Grossmannian uh, two four, so planes in four space, uh, whatever. And but let's just have a look at the point with a momentum, a particle with a momentum. So a particle um, just traveling kind of through space is determined by some vector d, the kind of a line of where it travels, right? So here, uh, where it travels, I have some points on the travel line, and d is just the difference between those two points. So the two points determine the line. But the two points also determine the momentum of this uh, particle, which in, well, in, in this interpretation in linear algebra is really just a cross product. And I wrote cross here, so this is a cross product, because I, I thought that x, x, y looks a little bit strange. So they're just a cross product that you usually do. In linear algebra, and we'll pick up this vector uh, m. Okay, and this was like what people uh, were studying for a long time. So you kind of need those six coordinates to describe this, like three coordinates for the vectors, and three, so three coordinates for the vector d, and three additional coordinates for the vector m. Right? So that's what you do. So we have six coordinates in total. Okay, um, a little bit of a simpler example because it fits in three space. So planes in three space, the two, three thing. So um, now every element here is a plane. And what determines a plane? The plane is determined by two vectors, which I now call A and B, because I will draw the little wedge in between. So A, B, uh, so here A and B. And the cross is kind of the orthogonal one. We have seen it before, but there's another notion, namely the, the area or just the parallelogram here. And that is usually the exterior power. So exterior power corresponds to the parallelogram. So A wedge B. And yeah, the plane is here determined by a wedge b, which is really just the parallelogram lying in the plane. And this is like exterior space. The first th thing of exterior space, I will recall in a second what exterior space is. Anyway, but this is kind of the construction. The case Plücker embedding, and then we had an embedding into symmetric space, and this is a kind of a dual embedding into exterior space. So the case Plücker embedding of the K, K Grassmannian into the case exterior power, so here n, oh this is a bad color, let me try again. So here n is n, and k is the case power. 
just sends a span of those guys, which is an element in the Grassmannian, right? So remember, this is essentially just this type of picture, the span of those guys, um, into the wedge of those guys. And the exterior algebra, or the exterior space, is really just non-commuting, uh, so anti-commuting polynomials, where whenever you change the variables, you get a sign. So that's the exterior algebra, and the exterior space is like degrading on the exterior algebra. Very similar to the symmetric algebra, which is like polynomials, and the symmetric powers are the grading of the polynomials, the exterior algebra does the same. The one difference is because you can't write down, so x1, let's say x1, x1, should be if you swap them, which is the same, obviously, but it should pick up a sign, should be x1, x1, uh, which doesn't really make sense. So in exterior space, those the, the ones where you have repeated entries, they die, and the yeah, exterior space is then very finite. And the dimension of the space is always n choose k, so ex n exterior space, uh, k is the exterior space of n dimensional space is n choose k, and yeah, so that's the dimension we map uh, into here, right? so n choose k dimensional space. Uh, and the previous slide was the example n equals 3, k equals 2, and the other example historically is n equals 4 and k equals 2. So this is kind of the exterior um, embedding of a Grossmannian into an exterior space, right? just sending the span to the wedge. And the wedge is like this higher stuff, a higher parallelogram, if you want, which then determines uh, the corresponding object, whatever it is, the k-plane, if you want. Um, and this proves, and this is kind of really nice, that the uh, Grossmannian is a projective space, or a, a variety, um, in the following way. So here is our example from before, uh, volumes in four space. Um, this should not be volumes. In this case, planes in four space, uh, planes in four space, planes. I'm not sure why I wrote volumes, it doesn't matter. Planes in four space, right? the example we had before, uh, dimension here is six, these are the six coordinates of the particle. And this is P5, you know, D5 is six, Blucher embedding in P5. So now take this vector, which is A wedge B, um, and do the following. So you, now you can define a map from k4, uh, this is this space here, k to the 4, or whatever, so from k4, uh, into the third exterior power of k4, as follows, you just send a, a vector, uh, v to v, and then wedged with, well, the corresponding thing from the exterior power. This gives you a map uh, in this case, a 4x4 four four matrix, because both spaces are 4-dimensional, this is 4-dimensional, and this is 4 to 3-dimensional, which is also 4-dimensional in this case, but in, in general you will get some matrix, whatever. And here it is just 4 to 4x4 four, four 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 matrix. And turns out, in this interpretation, yeah, the zero set of polynomials is actually really nice to get. There are 16 polynomial equations of order 3, and they are obtained by taking the 16 minus. So what, what is the minor of a 4x4 four four matrix? You just cross out uh, you like a, a column and a row, and there are of course 16 combinations of doing that, with 4 columns and 4 rows. And the minor, and then the determinant of that minor, gives you a polynomial of degree 3, and that polynomial, so the six, so those 16 degree cubic polynomials, their zeros are exactly um, by this Plucker embedding the points on the Grassmannian. This is completely overshooting, so you can realize this Grassmannian using fewer polynomial equations, but it gives you some way to pick up polynomial equations. And because this is interesting and a bit confusing, let me repeat that. So the linear algebra things, you usually or very often get them by taking a determinant of something, because the determinant is actually a polynomial of a certain degree. And here we just take 16 determinants of 16 minus in, uh, in the space from the matrix that we get by wedging with my uh, given vector here, with my parallelogram vector A, um, wedge B. And this realizes our friend here, um, the Grassmannian. So this, the Grassmannian is realized in the space, and then you can realize it using this 
type of idea and this works in general this type of idea as a projective variety with a certain number of equations um, quite a few of them you can do much better than those 16 but it doesn't matter we can just right now for right now it's totally fine because we just have found some equations and i said again because it's important they're given by determinants and determinants are those vanishing polynomials which is a nice connection between linear algebra and algebraic geometry anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and i also hope to see you next time